thank everyone for coming out. Uh, this was something we decided to do on Wednesday. Uh, we've been going through, so my name is Samantha DiGennaro. I'm a West Haven resident. I was born and raised in West Haven, a graduate of West Haven High. I moved back about a year ago and was so excited to see my town with a beautiful beach and people enjoying everything that West Haven has to offer. And then a friend called me and said, could you go to a police commissioner's meeting because someone drove through a group of protesters. I thought it was gonna be a simple, just be a body, make a, be another face to show that we don't support that here in West Haven. We are an inclusive, diverse community. But that's not what happened. Instead, it led to an entire summer of jumping through hoops, trying my best to follow every single thing that was told to me by officials, by city council members, by the police chief himself, by board of police commissioners. I never heard a word from the mayor, but I even called them city hall, had, was told incorrect information, was told to jump through hoops that then later I was told that was the wrong hoop. We're not reading your letter. We're not going to include you. Silence and ignoring the citizens, that is not a governing strategy. We cannot continue to use COVID as an excuse to not show up. We, this building behind us, we are here today because this building is closed. This building is still closed every single Friday. Our DMV is still closed. Other cities have started to reopen and our schools are open. If it's okay and safe for our schools, why is it not safe for our politicians? I personally handed a stack of violent threats to the police chief and the police commissioner, police, the board of police commissioners, exactly as they told me to do. I emailed them, I handed them printed. These threats said they were going to run people over. They were going to put cow catchers on their cars. And this wasn't a vague threat. This happened three days before a planned protest. This wasn't an abstract idea. There was a planned protest that this, these comments were made in response to. And I was told that these were keyboard warriors. Nothing could be done. And then we find out on Wednesday that a young woman is arrested for making a threat to an officer, which I just wanna be clear. I do not support threats to police officers. I don't support threats to anyone. I would like an inclusive, community where we can all just get along. Well, this threat was made on July 7th. If we were truly concerned about what was, about the safety and about the threat here, why did it take two months to arrest someone that we thought was a threat? That we thought was imminently planning to harm our officers. We should do better for our officers than that. Yes. We should protect our officers. Yeah. And it shouldn't take two months to do that. So I don't understand how threats to citizens don't matter and a two month old threat does. I just want consistency. I just wanna know what's the process. I'm happy to jump through hoops, I'm happy to do the work, but tell me what it is. Be honest, do the work, show up. They're not showing up, they're not doing the work. Thank you very much. So I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Barbara Fair is going to speak next. Hi, uh, I'm a West Haven resident and I was really surprised to hear uh, what was going on out here. And if you look around, you see the, the actual tweets that were sent out on Facebook. And to know that these tweets went out and no one was arrested and yet one woman made it, um, a tweet we made a, a Facebook post and it wasn't even really saying, calling out an officer or anybody that they're gonna actually hurt. They just made a, a little post about what should happen if officers, are, it was not a uh, fire for yeah. whatever they were doing. Yeah. So this one, this post somehow meant that someone had to get arrested. Yeah. And like uh, the lady Samantha just said, it took months to decide that that person was a threat. Now all I'm asking for is equal justice. If you're gonna arrest the people who, if you're gonna arrest a young lady for making a, a threat, 
then you need to look at all of these posts around here that were made against protesters out here, including uh, protests distinctly about black people, yes. then you need to ha make sure they get arrested too. Yes. And like uh, she said, to have to go through so many hoops to get someone to even respond yes. to what's going on out here yes. is insane to me. Um, before today, earlier today, I was reading something um, what that was going on in New Haven. I'm hoping it's not the same kind of attitude out here. But the mayor there spoke out against what was going on and, and with Breonna Taylor, the injustice. He spoke out and received a tweet from the police union head who said he needed to apologize because that was an insult to the New Haven Police Department. Now I've been over half of America thought what happened to Breonna Taylor was unfortunate and was unfair. Yeah. It was not a slight against the police department. It was a slight against the injustice that this woman uh, had to go through. Yeah. And me as a black woman was even more upset by it, by the, how the judgment came out. Because when you look at the judgment that did come out, the officers were not charged with killing Breonna Taylor, busting in her house and shooting, and shooting and killing her. They didn't get um, charged with that. They got charged because there was a neighbor next to a white neighbor and some bullets I assume went in her house. So that's what they were charged with. So that tells me as a black woman, my life doesn't matter. But the fact that you upset a white person, you're gonna be charged. Now if that's not injustice, I don't know what is. And so that's why I'm out here today. I just want to see equal justice for all of us, no matter what our ethnic group, color, race, whatever. We all deserve the same justice. When police officers get in those uniforms, they don't say, I'm here to serve and protect the white people and law, they just force the law on black people. They say, we are here to protect and serve a community. And that's what they need to do. And then when you have officials like mayors and uh, police commissioners and you respond, uh, you bring this to all of them and none of them respond to it, that was the call to action to come out here publicly and say what's been going on. So you can't hide behind COVID, you can't hide behind doors and not respond to what's going on in West Haven only when you choose to respond. Thank you. Thank you, my name is Brandon Patterson and um, you know, I, I'm born and raised in West Haven. I have a great respect for leaders that step up and take helm of public leadership in West Haven. I have a respect for people that take up the profession of the police. But what we are here for is equal justice. What we want is equal justice. And I have been driven to start organizing this community because in this environment, in our country, we need to make sure that everybody is treated equal before the law. And what we have seen displayed nationally, even here locally in our community, deserves people speaking out. Yes. Deserves people speaking out. When people in our community like Mubarak Salomon are shot down, mentally unstable person that police are aware about is shot down, and we see that happening in our community, this is a powder keg that could happen at any time if our officers were involved. Now, what we're talking about here today is about hypocrisy and the need for equal justice. Now, a 23-year-old was singled out for a random vague post on Facebook, yet we have brought to this police department time and time again, we've gone to the Board of Commissioners, we've gone to the mayor, we've gone to our council members, and we have brought them these threats that we are receiving towards protesters and nothing has been done. They won't even put out a statement saying that this behavior is not okay. Our police have made a statement that the First Amendment, this is what when they charged Kirsten Vega and put her name blasted it everywhere, media release blasted everywhere. When they put her name out, they said that First Amendment doesn't apply to threats. Well, we've brought them many threats. We brought them threats and they have not done anything about it. They told us directly to our faces. You know, because I've been organizing, I've gotten some special access to get meetings. We sat with the chief for three hours. 
and his deputies. We brought them specifically these threats. They told us that nothing could be done about keyboard warriors to our faces. We were resigned to the think, okay, that's it. Now, two months later, this happened, they're charging this woman, Curse Vega, about two months ago in July about a post that she made. Um, they are now charging her for that. Apparently keyboard warriors can be charged when it applies to the police. Is that fair and equal? Is that responsive to your citizenry? I have spoken to the mayor about this personally. I spoke with her a couple days ago. She said that things should be put up, everything should be applied fairly, justice should be applied fairly. She didn't know anything about the arrest. She didn't know anything about what happened, but she said justice should be applied fairly. I told her that we had threats made toward us. We've had threats made to a random rest haven residents and they brought it to my concern. And she said those same threats were brought to her concern. She said she forwarded that to the police. What has been done? Beyond that, let's talk about what our police department is doing tangibly. When we had protests happening in this city, what happened? Okay, what happened? We saw, we saw protests turn into chaos. And why was the chaos created? A woman drives her vehicle through organized protesters. Police proceed to guard the woman as she had just committed a crime. They let her drive the vehicle away. People are provoked and they start getting lifted. They arrest protesters and then sick dogs, as if we are in 1960s Alabama, sicking dogs on people that were just out here observing their First Amendment rights. Now we asked the police office, why do we use dogs? Knowing our history, understanding the protest was involving black people standing up for our rights. Why are we still using dogs in this time? Well, they said the dogs just happened to be there. <laughs> if you look at the paper, if you look at the pictures, they had an organized line of dogs ready to sick on people. Why is this happening in 2020 West Haven, Connecticut, where I pay taxes? I've learned my whole life. This is unfair. This is not equal. I've seen other protests happen in this city. That treatment doesn't happen to them. Where is the mayor? Where are our city leaders speaking out on these issues? We've gone to them directly. They have nothing to say. But silence is a response. Yes, it is. Silence is a response, and the people in this community understand that. And that's why those keyboard warriors were provoked to make these messages, saying they're gonna go get their guns for protests. They're out here saying they're gonna go and get their cars ready to drive through people. And when a woman actually does it, the police hide their arrest. Right. They arrested the woman for reckless driving. Was the Facebook post for that? Where was the Facebook post for that? That's what I'm asking. Right. Where was the post and the media release blasting the face of a woman that chose to drive through innocent protesters? But they blast the face of a 23 year old that makes a vague threat two months ago. What kind of equal justice is that? That's what we're asking. That's it. That's all. And no one can have a statement. No one has a statement. They can't even make a statement. But they have blasted a 23 year old and they're gonna, they told her, and I sat with her yesterday. I sat with her and tried to figure out what's going on with her. But this is not only just affecting her right now. This is affecting her future. Okay, because they said to her, okay, this charge is not gonna really mean anything, okay. But what's gonna happen is, the internet searches aren't going away. Her picture attached to a threat to police are not going away. That's there permanently. This is affecting this young woman's future. But we have explicit threats brought to this police department and nothing has been done. We're told to our faces that they can't do anything about it. I, I'm sorry, I, I, as a taxpayer in this city, it, it is disturbing to me. 
It's disturbing that we want to provoke our citizenry in this way. It's disturbing that we want to send out this kind of a message. That, okay, police receive justice and the regular people of this city do not. And that's why we're here. And that's why we're not going to let this die. This issue will not go away until justice is applied equally. Thank you. Declaring that this kind of activity of driving through people observing their First Amendment rights is not okay in West Haven and is against the law. We want a public release made on the woman who drove through protesters on July 5th. We also demand that they refuse any longer to use dogs for car control. That should no longer be a practice of police department in West Haven, Connecticut. That is police brutality. That is intimidation to all of the citizens that pay taxes here. Those are our three demands. We would like a public meeting with our police department and the administration here describing how they're going to protect the First Amendment in the city and describing how equal justice is going to be applied here forward and to hear out their community. Stop hiding behind COVID. Stop not showing up okay. on a Friday. People are working. They're not even here. This is on. This is not okay. And that's that, those are our demands. So you are asking for a public meeting? Yes, yes we are. You're asking yeah. public meeting. Uh, I just wanted to take the time to acknowledge that our state senator yes. for West Haven, uh, Gary Winfield, is here. Because, like we said, we're talking about the leaders who haven't showed up, who haven't made it, uh, said anything. Yes. So we want to make sure that we hear from the one man who did come out yes, and do. show good leadership in response to our commands. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gary Winfield. Um, I'll, be, I'll be really brief. Um, I just came out here because I happen to be on. Sorry, I, I just can't do it. <laughs> I happen to be on Facebook, um, and I saw some exchange. I saw ex Brandon's uh, stuff on Facebook, and I saw that this was happening, and I wanted to to be here um, just to uh, make sure that there was a presence of somebody who uh, is in government. Uh, and to uh, figure out exactly what was being said and to be somebody who can step in the center of this and talk to the people who people aren't getting an answer from. So uh, that's all I came out here for. I think it's important. I think when the citizens are speaking, whatever their issue is, yeah. the government should be there to have that conversation with them, to explain why we've, we've made the choices we've made. And we can agree or disagree about it, but that conversation should be had. So, yeah. so that's why I'm out here today. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm just... Whatever is going on with this particular situation, I'm thankful that there are citizens who uh, stand up and express the concerns of the people in the community, uh, because yeah. I think it's important. And I will do what I can to make sure that those conversations that you've been seeking actually happen. So, thank you. Thank you. And I just want to reiterate my appreciation for Senator Winfield. He has been there for us throughout the summer. He has came to protests uninvited and invited and he sticks up for people in our community when clearly we can't get any response from anyone else it just needs to be reiterated this is what public service is about and please remember that when it's election time yeah please and remember it there, because he's up on the ballot this year so if you're going to be voting please check for, for Kerry Winfield he's standing up for your citizenry walk in West Haven him. walk with him he's walking with you Okay, my name is Stanley Heller. I'm going to take off my uh, news media hat. Uh, TSVN, thestruggle.org. I also edit uh, the news site, westhavencall.com. I think a couple things have to be brought up. One, with July 5th, when the woman drove through the crowd, she was quoted in um, one of the TV stations. I don't know if it was 8 or 61 as saying something nasty to the people. So she also had a Blue Lives Matter sticker on her car. So together, one would think maybe this wasn't just somebody trying to get home quick. Maybe there was a political intent behind this. And if there was, look at the law. That becomes a hate crime. 
So then the question is, did the investigation, this amazing investigation by the West Haven police into that incident, which has been going on for over two months, I mean, it's not the Kennedy assassination, it's somebody <laughs> driving a car through people yeah. Yeah. with their tons of video. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we understand secondhand, I've been told, yeah. that the, the police didn't interview any witnesses. They tried to get some of the people who were injured. There were a couple people injured slightly, but they didn't talk to any of the witnesses. What kind of an investigation is that? They only talked to the police and looked at video? Was there a hate crime? I'd like to know that. Yeah. I'd also like to know the woman's name. Yes. You know, when somebody's arrested for anything, there is an incident report. How come that's not public? Yeah. Right. Not we public. don't know what happened. We don't know anything. And we don't know if she's been punished or if they just dismissed the whole thing. She was charged with reckless driving. Charge, well, but charge mean? doesn't mean anything. It could have been nollied. It could have been dropped. Could have been nollied. So we need and then know. there's the biggest thing, of course. Seven or eight blocks up this street, a young man was killed. Justice for Mubarak. Yeah. Mubarak Solomon drove a car. Whatever the circumstances were, we don't know. We're not going to know because he's dead. He drove his car within a minute. Of getting off that highway, he was surrounded by state troopers and by West Haven police. And within another minute, he was dead. He was in the car, the windows were up. Some people say his seatbelt was on. And they told him, you know, you could see in the video, you know, get out of the car. He didn't, he just sat there. And then within a half minute or so, somebody is smashing in the passenger side window. They're shooting a taser at him. I mean, what is all that about? The guy was pinned in. He no, was in a car, but he had nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Why couldn't they have just waited him out? Yeah. Two yeah. minutes, wait 15, 10, no. an hour. No. And, and you know, let's talk to your, you know, uh, family. Talk to a, a clergyman, they you know, down. They and they, they talk people they down. They talk people out. down. Yes, right. they have. Right. Yes, they have. I mean that that was not done. So there was misconduct there, and we don't know what part West Haven Police had in it because the West Haven Police Department has refuses to say mm. after numerous complaints and requests what happened there. Did the West Haven policemen shoot the taser? Did they break the window? Who knows? And it's been now, what, six, seven, eight months? Who knows what West Haven people did, West Haven police did. Final point, in, in uh, the case in Minnesota, the mayor immediately condemned what happened and later called for dismissal of the police and, and, and uh, criminal charges. Our mayor hasn't done that. In fact, I don't know of any politician who has done that. I don't know that the governor, I know he hasn't done it. Governor Lamont has been asked to say something, to criticize the state trooper, to call for his firing, if not criminal charges. Why hasn't Lamont called for his firing. But there's silence from Governor Lamont. I don't know any politician who has said anything. And that is really disheartening. So those are some things I, I wanted to bring up. Thank you. Woo! I just have to quickly say, when, when uh, I heard about the incident with dogs in West Haven, it brings me back to um, an incident that I can never forget. This young boy, his last name is Tyson. I can't remember his first name. He was my some of my kids' friends. Anyway, he got into a fight with another kid in West Haven. He ran from the police. They chased him onto the highway to his death. Wow. A little fight with somebody and you end up dead. Wow. That's what happened in West Haven. This was years ago. So West Haven has their history of how they deal with us. And I can see in 2020, it really hasn't changed much. And that's what's really disheartening. Right.
Yeah, I think we're... Uh, this, it's been kind of overwhelming this summer, to be totally honest, with every... I, I likened it to a bit of when, you, when you're looking for termites in a home and you poke things to see if they crumble. Every time I asked a question, it crumbled. Whether it was about what's happening with an investigation, what's happening with a meeting, simple questions like where are the meeting minutes from a meeting that happened six months ago led to a rabbit hole and a bunch of stalling. So we've got a problem of silence and a problem of ignoring that's happening across our city government. And I think when it comes to the police, it's just too serious to ignore. We need some leadership and I really want to make sure I say this before, it's a little bit off topic, but on the ballot in November, there is a power grab. There is a charter revision that will take away our ability to vote directly for our executive. And I urge everyone to investigate that. You can make your own decisions. I will be voting no. I want my vote to be the direct vote. I do not want the city council to choose the person leading my government. I do not want the city government, the city council to choose the, who decides each department. I don't, we, I can't get responses now from the mayor and she needs my vote. What's going to happen when we have a city manager who does not need my vote? Uh, there's no hope of getting a response then. Irrelevant! It, you, you can think it's irrelevant, but it's I coming. Do. I I, I, and I, I, we can, yeah. Well, I don't, that's not a good point to end on and I apologize, but I, I would be remiss if I missed that point. Because this, this epidemic of silence, of ineffectual government where they refuse to respond, it's, it's only going to get worse if we don't keep paying attention. So thank you everyone for coming out.